Madam Chair, we'll turn the floor over to you. Thank you. Uh, let's do a roll call. Uh, Mr. Stembridge? Present, Madam Chair. Thank you. Mr. Valencia? Present, Madam Chair. Mr. Langham? Present. Mr. Collins? Present. Ms. Olivier? Present. Ms. Bonato? Present. All right, the floor is yours, Mr. Stembridge. Thank you, Madam Chair. We'll continue with the rediscussion scheduled for 11.30 a.m. And, and we'll start off with the case with two companion cases, case BOA-152-1952 with the address of 25259R to 259 RF Market Street. Along with that, we have case BOA 1521950 with the address of 257 Market Street. If the applicant and or the representative and or the representative for the properties are present, would they please explain? Yes, thank you, Mr. Secretary, and good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Matt Eckel with Fletcher Tilton on behalf of the applicant. Uh, with me is Eric Zacherson from Context, the project architect. Uh, we're here this afternoon seeking approvals to subdivide the existing parcel at 257 Market Street, raise the existing rear garage, and erect four new townhome units for home ownership on the newly created lot. Currently, there exists a two-family dwelling fronting on Market Street on approximately a 16,700 square foot lot. The lot itself currently is very unique in nature as it's an extremely deep lot, as you can see there from the site plan. It's approximately 255 feet deep from Market Street back to its rear setback currently. As mentioned, we're proposing to subdivide the property, so the existing two-family building, as you can see on the far right of the plan there, uh, will remain on just under a 6,000 square foot lot, and the proposed townhouses will be on the rear lot containing just under 11,000 square feet. The project as designed in the shape of the lot allows us to maintain that existing streetscape on Market Street, and as mentioned, we'll keep that two family as is, and provides ample room for the proposed structure as well as storage of materials and vehicles during construction. Now you can see on your screen there again on the far right the existing two family structure which will have three dedicated parking spaces and then the four townhouses which will each have two parking spaces on the interior and one uh, bonus visitor space in terms of the full floor plans for the townhouse units because they're separate townhouses they will have individual entries as well as two interior parking spaces per unit and an office on the first floor the second floor will have a kitchen living room set up with one bathroom excuse me one and a half bathrooms and one bedroom and then the third floor will have two bedrooms and one bathroom as well as small front and rear decks to provide a little private open space the third floor as you'll see when we get down to the floor plans does have a five foot front pullback as well as an eight foot rear pullback so we did that to uh, mitigate and reduce any massing on the third floor and kind of tuck that third floor in above the first two floors below uh, this project did go through a very robust community process and did result in a number of changes to what you're seeing today. We reduced the unit count originally from seven to four. We increased the parking ratio from one to one to 2.25 to one, which we're at right now. And that was very important to the community and we were actually able to increase that parking ratio uh, without really increasing the impervious surfaces because as mentioned, we have two parking spaces on the interior at grade level of each townhouse unit and then you can see there kind of on the bottom left we have one additional uh, visitor space which will be permeable pavers so that won't be uh, reducing the uh, pervious count at all uh, we also eliminated previously proposed roof decks we heard loud and clear from the abutters they didn't want that so we removed those we redesigned the interior layouts of the townhouses to make them more family friendly with the one bedroom on the second floor and two on the third as currently constituted we were able to increase the rear and side setbacks to give a little bit more relief to abutters and develop a full landscape plan, uh, including open space for the residents as well as trees and plantings around the perimeter of the lot to provide uh, a natural buffering to, to abutters as well, as well as those permeable pavers to help with stormwater management. 
Uh, through these changes, we did eliminate previous violations cited for height and feet, side yard setback, and parking. Um, through this process, we were able to obtain and submit letters of support for the proposal, including three from Direct to Butters, and received a recommendation of approval with design review from the BPDA based on these changes. And with that, I'll happily pause and take any questions the board may have. Thank you. Are there questions from the board? Yeah, can you talk about how fire truck access would work? Absolutely, Ms. Panato. So on the uh, lower portion of your the screen there, we have a 20 foot wide access point. So that'll be for obviously the, the vehicles at each townhouse to get back there. And the 20 feet is required per code for fire trucks to access it. So we'll have about a 14 foot driveway and then we'll have three feet on either side, which will not contain any obstruction. So it'll be a 20 foot wide clear path for fire trucks to, to go from Market Street all the way to the rear of the proposed townhouses. And then they would have to back out is the idea? Correct, Correct. yes. You're required to have the 20 feet. Obviously, if you can have a turnaround, all the better. But here on this site with only 60 feet of, of frontage, we really couldn't provide that. But we do provide the 20 feet as required. Mm -hmm. Other questions from the board or from Ms. Panato? No, not from me, thanks. Okay. Hearing none, we have a public testimony. <laughs> Madam Chair, members of the board, Siggy Johnson with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. ONS has hosted two of others meetings regarding this proposal, most recently on December 12th of last year. At that meeting, the Butters had a number of concerns regarding parking, size, traffic, density, and emergency vehicle access. Uh, this applicant also presented to the Brighton Alston Improvement Association, the active civic group in this area, which voted to abstain and not take a position on the proposal. Uh, our office has received and forwarded to the board four letters of support and three letters of opposition. It is our understanding that the proponent has engaged in discussions with direct abutters and has made a number of changes to their proposal as a result of those discussions. With that, we defer to the judgment of the board. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have a few raised hands very well. Um, Jen and Tim. Hi. Um, we're Jen and Tim Cole. Uh, we're directed butters on on set 24 Sanderson Place, and we support the development um, because we feel it will bring, you know, attractive uh, housing and families to more the families to the neighborhood. Um, and we work closely with the developer, who's been you know, very very attentive, very sensitive to our concerns and others, and has been very responsive to those concerns. And has been um, open to meeting with other neighbors on our street and taking our concerns seriously and they're also pretty responsive to communications, to communications. Yeah, so we've been happy with we've what been we've happy what we've seen with thank them. you thank you um and then joshua and then deidre hi so my name is joshua harrison i'm with the butter i'm on 40 ryan road um i guess i'm i appreciate the improvement with the uh with the roof decks which is something i was I was previously very, very against, but I still think that it's kind of out of proportion with the size of the site, just having walked around it. And I also just worry about removing trees and adding, I guess you guys call it pervious surfaces. We just did this process with the park behind there where we, you know, we, we made sure it wasn't, uh, it wasn't astroturf, it wasn't, uh, I guess, another, you know, paved surface, and there's just this proliferation of non-green spaces. So. Just uh, like what's the plan to preserve the trees and to, to also to just make sure the thing isn't kind of looming over this over this block because if you look there's you know there's kind of a grade and the block goes down and I'm just worried like these third floors are kind of looming over us and like you know where previously we have trees and green space we're going to have like people looking down on us and, uh, so just thank you, you. thank things. you all right and then Deidre. There you go. All right, just trying to unmute. Um, my name is Derek, as trusted Marcus Griffin, who lives on Morrow Road in Morrow Road. They've been the last meeting, but the length of construction grew 12 to 14 months from start to foundation. This is a hardship, not on the butters, but on the community at large, given that Market Street is a major street that is already congested. 
There has been considerable neighborhood objection from abutters. Numerous signatures have been obtained. My number one concern, having a mother who's 86 years old living on Morrow Road, is that ambulance or fire truck being able to get in and get to the house on time. If you sit out on Market Street, out on at September when it's heavy duty traffic at five o'clock, you don't know when it's gonna happen, but seconds count. Emergency response time, Market Street is extremely congested. Construction activity would add significantly to the traffic congestion and adversely affect emergency vehicle response time. This is the utmost concern. Trees don't matter to me, it's survival time. I think the city should be concerned about safety, number one. Secondarily, rat activity. Digging any number of new foundations is going to exacerbate the rat activity. We have a big problem with this. The city has done nothing for this. Congestion of housing, fire hazard. As someone who was next door to a house that was on fire, when you have a house on fire next door and seconds count, you would understand what it's like to almost lose stuff out of your house. Density and character, overcrowding of building, the height. I'm glad you're reducing the, the, the uh, roof decks, but that doesn't really affect us on the overall aspect of the character of the house. Adding more, you're trying to put too much into a very small space. Parking, not enough parking. Construction workers and vehicles will reduce the number of on-street parking. Health concerns, dust and pollution will adversely affect those with sensitive respiratory ailments as it will bring up the dust. Sunlight. The building height would negatively impact the surrounding residents and restrict sunlight to gardens. This would cause legally cognizable harm and deteriorate their existing residents' quality of life. Accessibility. This should be the number one concern for Boston. There are numerous people who have wheelchairs, they're blind, they go up and down that street. If you look on a garbage day, what happens? When all those bins are out there, nobody can pop. The, the garbage people just, they throw them back in the middle of the way, they don't care. There's kids who have to walk to school to St. Colin Hills and to, to public schools. There is no consideration for anyone who has a handicap. And that should be a real, a real concern, especially with Michelle when we're talking about accessibility. Ma'am, can you wrap up? We have your, I have your written comment. I have seen every single thing in, the, in front of the board approved today. I would like to see, I would like to see some thought given to the, to the emergency response time because if something was to happen, there will be a recording of this and everyone who has approved everything would be accountable. We request that the request this be denied. Madam no, Chair, I have no additional questions. Can the applicant respond I, to Hold on, terms? I didn't get a chance to talk. I have three. My hand was raised. Hi, thank you. Um, good afternoon. My name is Lisa Redding. I'm an abutter that lives at One Keenan Road with my husband. I've lived there with him for the past 21 years. I'm in strong opposition to this proposed construction, which is directly behind our single family home and others on Keenan and Ryan, Ryan Roads. The newest proposal of four, yes, it's been reduced, so now four, the last proposal was five, four three stories tall townhouses is not keeping with the single family and two family homes of this community of Brighton. And it is causing real concern for safety and parking. Those are the two issues I'd like to discuss. Again, though the proposal has reduced to four townhouses instead of five, there are glaring problems still with this proposal. First, the fact is that the proposal has not actually decreased the lot size and the plans for this construction have actually increased the number of residents that each townhouse can accommodate. So the last proposal of five townhouses had three bedrooms in each and the ground floor was originally called an office slash guest bedroom. So we'll call it like it is a bedroom. So five townhouses had three bedrooms now it is four townhouses with four bedrooms. So that has significantly increased the number of people who can live in each unit. So 
because of that, the increase in the additional garage space that was added is not adequate parking anymore for the residents, and potentially up to eight people per unit. This is a too densely populated backyard space in this community of Brighton and would significantly compound an already difficult on-street parking situation in this part of Brighton. Such a structure packed into this too small space continues to create a significant safety concern in this neighborhood. The only vehicle access, as you have mentioned, is the driveway. That one driveway, not a street, okay, is now 20 feet. So it can, um, a fire truck can fit on that 20 feet, but how do they actually make the turn into that driveway from Market Street? The driveway is now a moot point because unless you eliminate parking spaces on Market Street, that fire truck will not be able to make the turn from Market Street into that driveway. This poses a huge risk for the people and property that abut that proposed construction. Over the past 21 years, I've witnessed an increasing congestion, as Deirdre said, in the, this community of Brighton. The proposed construction will only exasperate the conditions of this congestion, as well as significantly alter the character of our neighborhood. I strongly oppose this proposal. There are far too many zoning violations, and we ask that you not grant relief for these violations. Thank you. Thank you. Any other raised hands? Sherry? Cheryl. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Cheryl. Did you? Did she put her hand down? Um, I have no additional raised hands of Cheryl Wilson. Thanks. Okay. Can the applicant uh, respond to some of those concerns? Sure, Madam Chair, thank you. Uh, just to go through some of the concerns uh, one by one if I can here. In terms of the uh, proposed structures looming over other structures, uh, that is why we specifically pulled the, the structure in on the third floor. We've done a shadow study which shows very limited effect on any other structure. The only shadows go into the backyard. Uh, of, of our director butter on the right who does not have a structure back in the rear so shadows are not an issue and we've even further decreased that by pulling in the structure five feet in the front and eight feet on the left on that third floor so it operates as a, a two and a half story building really uh, in terms of the ambulance and, and uh, emergency responses along market street we know and understand market street can be very congested that is why this site being so unique and having 11,000 square feet in the rear will allow us to fully construct the structures on site with storage, materials, construction vehicles. We have ample room off the street to not cause any additional uh, congestion. This isn't a typical construction project where we'd be looking to park on the street or, or tie up the street. We actually have plenty of room off site to handle all that. So although Market Street is congested, we don't anticipate this project increasing that at all. Everything will be done on site. In terms of the rat activity, we did hear that through the, the community process and we're well aware of it. We would have a full pest control uh, program in place and go through inspectional services, community sanitation regulations. So we believe this will actually improve that situation. Uh, parking, as I mentioned originally, and was mentioned by some of the abutters was a, a grave concern when we were at one-to-one -one parking. Residents on Keenan and Market thought that there would be overflow parking on those uh, street spaces or side street spaces. That's why we were able to increase to over two spaces per, per unit, which far exceeds the 1.75 spaces uh, required uh, per zoning. So we actually have over what's required now in terms of parking. In terms of uh, what was mentioned about the actual layouts of the unit, that, that was incorrect. We are proposing three bedroom units. Um, we have four townhouses with three bedrooms. That's been the proposal for the last six months. That remains the proposal. And finally, for the fire trucks accessing the site, as we discussed briefly, we do have the full 20 feet required, and, and we do have the turning radius to get on site. Um, so we believe we've addressed a lot of these concerns. I understand there's still comments, but we've made a lot of changes and believe this project fits within the character. This section of Market Street is a mix of single and two families, but it also has uh, mixed use with ground floor commercial and apartments above. It has uh, the Saybrook right down the street. It has uh, other condos and apartment buildings. So we believe this density is appropriate. Thank you. With all due respect, you can call like a room an office doesn't make it an office. I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, can the applicant, just a question, uh, 
since you reduced it from five to four, uh, did that come with a reduction of like a increase in any of your setbacks? Uh, like, did it, did it give open space back, or what did what happened yeah. with that? <clears throat> yeah, I, I can address that as part of that effort. Um, we did increase the setbacks. The uh, setback on our right side was uh, originally I believe about five feet and is now 12 feet. Um, the, the setback on the driveway side is 20 feet and has been such. The setback on the rear to our property line is about 55 feet. Um, and per the neighbor's request, we did a uh, an analysis and I can tell you that we are about um, 55, at least 55 feet from any neighbor on Keenan Road. Our building is. Our um, building is a, uh, at least 79 feet from any building on Sanderson Place, and uh, at least um, 84 feet from a building from a house on Seeger Court. So, we while we're, we might only be 12 feet from our property line. Um, on one side and 50 feet on the rear, we're quite a, quite a distance from any neighboring building uh, housing. Thank you. And Mr. Hampton, if you're available, could you could you expand on BPDA's recommendation? Are you with us, uh, Mr. Hampton? All right. Doesn't sound like it. Uh, any other questions from the board? Hearing none, may I have a motion? Um, I'll make a motion for approval with the proviso that no building code relief be granted uh, and BPDA design review. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Mr. Langham? No. The Collins. Uh, I'm going to vote no as well. Ms. Olivier. I'm going to abstain if that's okay. Ms. Panato. Yes. The chair also votes no. The motion does not carry. Is there another motion? Thank you. <laughs> I'll motion to deny without prejudice. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge? Yeah. Mr. Valencia? No. Mr. Langham? Yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. Ms. Olivier? I'm going to abstain for this from this vote as well. Ms. Bonato? No. The chair votes yes. And I lost count because I'm not sure what I'm not sure what, the, what an abstention does. Samantha, can you? The motion does carry, Madam Chair. Wait, hold on one moment, Madam Chair. Hold on one second. Yeah, there's an abstention, so I don't. We have not had an abstention before. With an abstention, do you have a six member board? No, so I don't know. Wait, waiting on Samantha. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we do need five voting members to vote for it to pass. So at this point, the motion would fail. Madam Chair, if I may interject, as um, we were not made aware of this abstention and a six person board. Uh, well, at this time, no, I requested well, referral. There, seven, there is a seven person board, someone abstained. So I don't know. Someone needs to explain what that means. Madam Chair, can you hold on for just two minutes for me to double check on something? Thank you.
All right, apologies, Ms. Darko. We are waiting for uh, an official decision. I understand, Madam Chair. This is the first for me as well. Indeed. Madam Chair, if it helps at all, as if this is viewed as a six-person board, since we, uh, my client and the team wasn't made aware of that at the outset, um, we probably would have requested a deferral. Not that Madam well. Chair? And... Yes? Um, um, so typically, like by default, um, when two people were opposed to the denial without prejudice, it would go straight to a denial where they wouldn't be able to come back for a year. Um, but would one member who voted no to denial without prejudice, would they be able to reconsider their vote? And would you, if so, would you entertain that motion? Okay, so let's back up. We have a yeah. full seven members, just to clarify right. for Mr. Nichols' question. One yes. person abstained, which we've never had before, so I, I, I'd like to know if that's allowed. That's my first yeah. question. And then your comment would be, is someone, because right now we have four people supporting this motion, two people uh, not opposed, and one person abstaining. So are you asking if one of the no's would become a yes? Yes. So I'm asking if one person who voted no for denial without prejudice, if that would, if they would be willing to reconsider their vote to a yes. So then it would go to denial without prejudice. Otherwise, it, the default would be for a denial. Okay, well then that question goes to Mr. Valencia and Ms. Panato. And yes. so the distinction, okay, go ahead. To ensure that this project had the opportunity to make improvements and come back during the next few weeks and not after one year, I would change my vote and support the motion that Mr. Collins made. So my vote okay. for the motion will be yes okay so with that the motion carries madam chair i'll just ask one more time if the board would consider a deferral uh, as, as i've never okay. experienced this before and I, I think we should be granted the opportunity to have a full seven member board without an abstention no. I, I will defer to legal i asked the legal on that because uh I don't know how to answer Madam the, Chair, yeah. you, you can accept a deferral. I can or I cannot? Can. Okay. Well, would someone, well, would someone like to make a new motion or would you like this motion to stand? Can I make a motion to defer? Okay. Is there a second on that? Yeah. Okay. Mr. Stembridge. Yeah. Mr. Valencia. Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. Ms. Olivier? Yes. Ms. Panato? Yes. Chair votes yes, the motion carries. Uh, is there a new date? The next available. Madam Chair, um, we could do a date of August 13th, but we can also work with the applicant given us Okay, Sorry. let's work with the applicant. How's that, Ms. Darko? Thank you, Madam Chair. All right, next case. The next case is case DOA 15973, 
going to the address of 21 Holton Street. The applicant and the representative present, would they please explain the case to the board? Yes, they, they, they might be calling you on the zoning hearing, so I gotta go. Thank you. Right. Okay, hopefully see you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Members of the board, Attorney Jeff Drago with Drago and Toscano with a business address of 11 Beacon Street. Here on behalf of Wesley Lung, my client, uh, and what you're looking at is a rendering uh, of a project that was previously approved by this board back in September of 2023 at 21 Bolton Street. The project remains exactly the same. Uh, it is to change the occupancy from three units to five units, renovate the existing dwelling, and to erect two three-story additions. The change comes in the parking. Uh, when we originally presented to the board, we were at uh, nine parking spaces on the site, and uh, the board approved the project, but made a change, if you remember, to reduce the parking. So uh, the parking space count uh, went down to five. Um, and so by doing that, that created a new violation. And I can show just a picture of the parking, nothing else, everything else in the project remained the same. Um, and if we go to the site plan, you can just see uh, the parking layout. Next, next slide, please, Madam Ambassador. Uh, one more. Right here is, is perfect. So you can see there was a row of parking spaces previously in the back that had nine. Um, the board felt that uh, they would rather see more green space in the site, approve the project with um, provisos, one of which was uh, along with BPDA design review, was to remove those additional parking spaces, leaving us with five. Um, board approved the project. Uh, once we reviewed everything, we noticed that created a new uh, variance uh, or the need for a variance because of a violation. Um, so insufficient parking um, was now added. We came back to the board, try to get the proviso removed uh, through board final operator. The board, um, I believe uh, Ms. Beta Barada uh, asked us that no, that she wanted to see that um, the green space. So we reached out, um, tried to get the process expedited. Uh, the mayor's office actually allowed us to go to the subcommittee because it was a minor change that the board had asked for. At the subcommittee, we were asked to come to the full board just because of the size of the project uh, to come back to the board. So that's that's what brings us back today. Um, I can pause to answer any questions that the board may have. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Okay, hearing none, may I have public testimony? Madam Chair, members of the board, Siggy Johnson with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. The Office of Neighborhood Services held a number of abutters meetings on this proposal. The most recent one was on April 5th, 2023, where abutters had a number of questions the applicant answered. Uh, one abutter expressed opposition based on density and what they felt was the historical character of the home. The applicant met with the Alston Civic Association. Their president should be on the call today to testify as to their stance in just a moment. Our office received and forwarded to the board three letters of opposition, and uh, we wish to defer to the judgment of the board at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I do it. Tommy, go ahead. Sorry. Um, Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Tony Tizadoro representing the Austin Civic Association. Uh, we're basically on just to confirm uh, that there have been no changes to the project. Uh, Attorney Drago did a great job of summarizing the history of this uh, project. And uh, we could tell from the flyer, given that there was no additional abutters meeting, that uh, the city considered this a, a minor technical uh, correction and then we were caught a little bit off guard when the subcommittee decided to put it in front of the full committee so we're just here to me just to confirm that uh, the project is as is and as we initially did uh, we defer judgment to the board and we'll do so again thank you okay and madam chair oh go ahead anyone else sorry just to drag up quickly has this been through design review already uh, it did. Uh, it did go in BPD, BPDA design review. No, it has not been through. Okay, thank you. 
Thank you. Any other raised hands? I see no additional raised hands at the moment. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Hearing none, may I have a motion? A motion to approve with BPDA design review. Is there a second? Second. Yeah. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. Ms. Olivier? Yes. Ms. Panato? Yes. Chair votes yes, the motion carries. Thank you very much. Okay, um, at this point, it would be good if we, at, for the one o'clock time frame, if we ask for any withdrawals or deferrals from that time frame. Uh, good afternoon, Matt Henze for uh, Acidome. Um, does it, we are requesting a deferral. For what Which case? Time? What address? Yeah, it's uh, 52 to 54 Glenway, 56 to 58 Glenway, 142 Erie. It's the second and through fourth items on the uh, one o'clock slot. So for okay. the last three cases to be heard at one o'clock, you're asking for a deferral for first case BOA 160 1598 with the address of 142 Erie Street. Along with that, case BOA 160 1654 with the address of 56 to 58 Glenway Street. And finally, case BOA 160 1605 with the address of 52 to 54 Glenway Street. That's correct, and I appreciate the uh, member's time. Uh, that's a brief uh, explanation. Why? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yes, on behalf of ACIDO and African Community Economic Development of New England, we are working closely with MOH. This is a Welcome Home Boston project. Uh, working closely with MOH, and we, we did uh, have some design changes that resulted in a change in the street address and possibly a change in the violations from uh, our plan reviewer at ISD. So that, that's resulting in a request for a deferment to August 13 at the advice of uh, Stephanie Haynes. Great, and next available. Madam Chair, we have a date of August 13th. Would that be acceptable? Mr. Henze? Well, the proposal, yes, the sooner the better, but August 13 is acceptable. Thank you. Okay, thank you. May I have a motion? A motion to defer to August 18th. Was it 18 or 13? 13. 13. May I have a second? Second. second. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. Ms. Olivier? Yes. Ms. Panato? Yes. Chair votes yes, the motion carries. See you then. Thank you, members. And with that, we'll return to the case of schedule for 11.30 and move on to case BOA 153-9699 with the address of 27 Colonial Avenue. If the applicant and or their representative is present, would they explain to the board, please? Hi, my name is uh, Roberto Leon, and I'm the architect for the project. So uh, we are requesting a uh, approval for the project. We are converting the three-family building to a uh, four-family building. And currently, the, the, the fourth unit is in the, uh, the basement. It already exists. Uh, I can show you the, uh, the floor plan of the basement here. We've had several meetings with the neighbors uh, and they had a uh, concern about the, the parking, uh, the, there was a lack of parking 
for this uh, additional fourth unit. And uh, we, if you go back to the uh, site plan, which was the page before that, we ended up providing additional parking on the site so that we are currently uh, complying with the number of uh, parking spaces required for, for the project. <coughs> So uh, we've received about 12 signatures from neighbors in support of the project. And uh, we've, uh, we've shown that this is uh, a project that is, you know, somewhat in, in similar to in terms of multifamily, providing multifamily housing in this neighborhood, as you can see by that graphic right there. Those are the, uh, the uh, the, the buildings that have four units or more in the neighborhood and the, and the yellow house right there on the left corner is, is, is our project. So uh, we believe that this is a, an appropriate uh, change of use for the neighborhood. And uh, in addition to the, the fourth unit, one of the things that we've been required to do is provide a uh, sprinkler system for the building, so we're actually making it a, a safer safer structure overall. Uh, so uh, that is basically the extent of the, uh, the project. And, uh, we would ask that uh, you approve the, uh, the change of use uh, and allow us to have the, uh, the fourth unit for the, uh, for the property. But can you pull up the page that shows the parking? There seems to be some concern about your tandem parking. Right, so we show five spaces and uh, well, you know they're all basically in tandem, which is pretty much what is existing there now. That there's an existing driveway and they're all tandem parking spaces. And what we've done is provide parking spaces that comply with the city's uh, uh, parking space sizes. So there are currently already five parking spaces in the same configuration? There are, there are three parking spaces in, in that configuration, and what we've done is added two more to basically get us above the threat to the threshold of the required five parking spaces for uh, because of that fourth unit. So can you just point out numerically which ones are existing? Yeah, so that would be one, two, and three are, are existing, and we're adding the spaces four and five. Okay, and we're going to take down a shed in the, in the back of the property in order to accommodate that. Okay, thank you. Are there questions from the board? Has BTD reviewed this? I don't think we typically see tandem spaces. Uh, mm -hmm. No. So to answer your question from Aaron, Ms. Panato, uh, we received no, recommendations, but not on this from BTD. Yeah, I was asking the applicant as he met with BTD on this parking okay. configuration. No, we, we have not been asked to meet with BTD. Yeah, I mean, we don't typically see this and approve this. This is, this is, um, residential project that, you know, as I mentioned, the, the, the three tandem parking spaces already exist. Mr. Leo, I would assume that the, your parking car is in the driveway, but the two parking spots are in the back close to the garage, correct, as of now? So the there's three parking spaces along the driveway, correct, and then the, the back, the but back of the property. Is that used or is it used as individual parking spots currently? individual parking spots for for the units. Okay. okay, other questions from the board? Hearing none, may I have public testimony? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. This time the Mayor's Office to defer to the judgment of this board. Uh, ONUS, uh, we posted two butters meetings for this proposal. Uh, the applicant went on to meet with the Talbot Norfolk Triangle. Um, we received a petition uh, with 11 signatures in support and one in opposition. Uh, with that, I will defer to the board at this time. Thank you. Okay, we have a few raised hands. Bruce, go ahead. Uh, 
Bruce Brosman for Councillor Worrell's office. Um, we have met with uh, TNT and they are widely in favor of it with just some hesitations about the parking situation. Um, and our office is in support of the project. Thank you. Jeff? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board, Jeff Hanson, BPDA. Uh, we're on record for this, uh, for denial without prejudice. Uh, it's taking away the existing green space back there. The maneuverability is impossible, and uh, I don't see how BTD is going to approve this anyway. Uh, but five spaces is way too much. I think even the existing three is too much. But when you look at the plans, it's eight and a half by 20 all the way up, but it takes no account into uh, consideration a maneuverability or uh, and the existing green space is disappearing. So we can't support this. So we're on record for denial without prejudice. I can uh, let us check have no additional raised hands at the moment. Okay. Any other questions for the applicant? With that, may I have a motion? I'll make a motion to deny without prejudice. I, I think they need to come back with an alternative parking design. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. Ms. Olivier? Yes. Ms. Panato? Yes. Their votes yes, the motion carries. Next, we have case BOA 158-4507 with the address of 2136-2140 Washington Street. If the applicant and or their representative is present, would they please explain to the board? Yes, Mrs. Stanbridge. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Derek Small. I'm a business adjuster of 51 Dobson Road. With me today is Ms. Kai Grant, who is the owner and operator of Black Market in Nubian Square. And today we're here seeking to change the legal occupancy of the building from office and retail to office retail to social club with live entertainment um, and boutique retail space and storage in the basement. Um, the subdistrict here is the Dudley Square EDA, um, Nubian Square EDA, um, and our violations are as follows. We have one violation uh, for a conditional use permit uh, for the social club, and then with regard to insufficient parking, we have about four or five parking spaces in the rear. But primarily, it's just to legalize the current use, which is um, social club, uh, retail, as the uh, black market hosts a number of events both private and public events, uh, cultural events, and uh, we're seeking co to continue that use. Okay. Any questions from the board? Hearing none, may I have public testimony? Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office could defer to the judgment of this board, some background information in the community process, and a butters meeting was held on March 21st. Um, there was not an active neighborhood association in this area. However, the applicant went out um, and received and collected 20 letters of support from business owners, as well as also elected officials, uh, such as uh, State Senator Liz Miranda and Rep. John Moran. Um, our office is unaware of any opposition at this time. With that, we'd like to defer to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, I see no additional raised hands at the moment. Thank you. May I have a motion? Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Stambridge? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Mr. Lang? Yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. Ms. Olivier? Yes. Ms. Panato? Yes. Your votes yes. The motion carries. Good luck. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Good afternoon. Next two cases have been deferred, so that takes us to the hearing schedule for 1 p.m. And to start off with, we have case DOA 158-8456 
with the address of 77 through 79 Hawkins Street. If the applicants and or their representatives are present, if they please explain the case to the board. Supervisor, I accept the request on you. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Marie Morris out with Boston Communities and the Welcome Home Harvest Street development over 77 Harvard. Um, Matt, good afternoon, Madam Chair, and thank you for allowing us to present this um, project to you today. I'm joined here today by Jess uh, with Robinson & Co., our attorney um, with Studio Moons Architects, Elise Architects, as well as my partners, uh, Phil Cohen and Matt Urbino. So I will hand it over to Jess to keep this moving along to get us started to talk about the project. Thank you. Thanks, Marie. Um, good afternoon, Madam Chair and members of the board. Speaking for the applicant, I'm Jess Barty from Robinson and Cole with the business address of 1 Boston Place in Boston, 02108. I'm joined by Marie Morissette, Bill Cohen, and Matt Robina from the project developer at Boston Communities, and also joined by project architect Elise Zulius from Studio Luz Architects. As described in the appeal filing and as shown on the site plans, this appeal relates to the vacant parcels of land owned by the City of Boston and located at 77 and 81 Harvard Street in Dorchester for the proposed construction of a four-story multifamily residential structure that will contain 13 residential units. The proposed project is 100% affordable with seven units affordable to households making up to 80% of the area median income and six units affordable to households making up to 100% of the area median income. All units are home ownership units. The Mayor's Office of Housing designated Boston Communities as the developer for the subject property along with other city owned parcels along Harvard Street for its Welcome Home Boston Phase 1 program, which is designed to provide affordable home ownership opportunities within Boston. The property is significantly undersized and the project as proposed balances the difficult site conditions with the need for new affordable multifamily construction in the area and a literal, in, a literal enforcement of the zoning code would render the project infeasible. At this point, I will turn it over to, oh, well, we already introduced yourself. So I will turn it over um, to Elise Zulius to review the project's design and then she can turn matters back to me to review the zoning relief requested pursuant to this appeal. Elise? Thank you, Jess. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Elise Elias from Studio Luz Architects, representing the architectural team on this project. Um, so as you can see here, this is our current site plan. So we are up along Harvard Street, and you can see that we're providing seven parking spaces at the rear of the site um, with access through a driveway on plan left. We also have a small green space located at the rear of the site for resident use. Um, as you'll see here, the main entrance is off of Harvard Street with a secondary rear entrance coming from the rear parking lot. Next slide, please. And throughout this project, we have worked to um, provide family size three bedroom units as the majority of our unit mix. And so on this first floor plan here, you'll see that we have three units on the ground floor, two being two three bedroom units and one being a one bedroom sensory unit. Next slide, please. Um, the floor plans on the second and third floor stack. So here you'll see we have three units on each of those floors, all of which are three bedroom units. And you'll also see that we're providing two group two accessible units throughout the project located on plan north here at the rear of the site. Next slide, please. On the fourth story, we have four units, two being the three bedroom units and then one one bedroom unit and one studio unit. You can also see on the plan here that we have a centralized corridor throughout all the floors with two stairways and one elevator um, throughout the building. Next slide, please. And in compliance with the new energy stretch code, we are providing a solar ready roof. Next slide. And so you'll see here, we are proposing four stories at this site, um, and we are trying to conceal the height of the building within a mansard roof structure. So you can 
um, start to see here that we're trying to minimize the visual um, weight of the building up on that top story by concealing the entire fourth floor um, in the mansard roof structure. Next slide. And you'll see that that wraps all the way around the building. Next slide, please. So we're proposing 11 foot floor to floor for an overall building height of 49 feet. And as you can see on this section here, there is a significant grade change to the site that we are working to accommodate. And Jess, I'll turn it back to you to review the variances that we're requesting. Thanks so much, Elise. As identified by the notice read at the beginning of this hearing, the proposed project requires zoning relief in the form of a use variance for the multifamily dwelling use proposed on the property and variances from the off-street parking requirements and off-street loading requirements for the Dorchester Neighborhood District. The project proposes seven parking spaces as opposed to 19.5 parking spaces and proposes no loading spaces as opposed to one space as required by the zoning code. The proposed project also requires dimensional variances with respect to floor area ratio. The proposed project, um, uh, excuse me, the project proposes an FAR of 1.87 as opposed to 0.5 as required by the zoning code. Building height and stories, the project proposes four stories as opposed to two and a half stories. Building height and feet, the project proposes 49 feet as opposed to 35 feet as required by the zoning code. Conformity with existing building alignment, the project is proposing zero feet as opposed to approximately nine feet. Side yard depth, the project proposes five feet as opposed to 10 feet as required by the zoning code. And rear yard depth, the project proposes 16 feet as opposed to 30 feet as required by the zoning code. Our memorandum in support of this appeal filed with the board on April 5th sets forth our arguments in favor of granting the requested relief. So at this point, I am happy to conclude the formal presentation and make myself and the rest of the development team available to answer any questions that the board may have. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you. Yes. Are there questions from the board? Okay, hearing none, may I have public testimony? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. This time, Mayor's Office has deferred to the judgment of this board. Uh, this proposal went through an MOH-led community process. So they'll be able to elaborate more. Uh, the applicant also reached out to the west of uh, Washington, uh, the WOW group, and uh, received their support. Uh, with that, we'll defer to the board at this time. Thank you. All right. So I can get um, Bruce and then Tiara. Bruce Brosman for Councilor Worrell's office. Um, we have worked closely with Mayor's Office of Housing as well as the developers on this project. Um, we are excited to see that it is affordable family style units and is environmentally sensitive and we stand in support of the project. Thank you, and Tara? Hi, my name is Tara Satchville, and I'm a development officer with the Mayor's Office of Housing. As stated before, this project is, involves the disposition of city-owned land uh, through the Welcome Home Boston program. Uh, Boston community, community is a designated developer for these sites, and the project has gone through an extensive community process and has the full support of the Mayor's Office of Housing. Thank you. Thanks, and uh, with that said, I have no additional raised hands. Thank you. Thank you. With that, may I have a motion? Madam Chair, I think this is a good project and I really appreciate seeing that they are using city land to create affordable housing, affordable condos at this moment, and my, I make a motion uh, of approval. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Stambridge? Yeah. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Mr. Lyman? Yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. Ms. Olivier? Yes. Ms. Panato? Yes. Chair votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. That takes us to the end. Open meeting law discussion. Yes. Yeah. Yeah.
Um, yes, Madam Chair. Um, so a community group, the Community Alliance of Mission Hill, CAMH, alleged that the board violated the open meeting law during the April 30th, 2024 hearing for proposed 95 unit residential development to be located on a corner lot at the intersection of Tremont and St. Alphonse's Street in the Mission Hill neighborhood. The proposal includes demolition of an existing building on Tremont Street and the creation of a new lot with an address at 100 St. Alphonse's Street. In essence, CAMH has filed a complaint against the Boston Zoning Board of Appeal because of how it was presented at the BPDA community meetings. The BPDA is a separate entity from the Boston Zoning Board. The Zoning Board of Appeal fulfilled its notice requirements under open meeting law. The notice was sent more than 24 hours before the meeting, filed with the clerk, posted on the city's website, and contained more than enough information to identify the project, including the parcel IDs, permit number, the description of the project, and the zoning violations it was seeking relief from. Does anybody have any questions about that? No. May I entertain a motion? The motion would be to approve of the legal ISD draft uh, response. Yes, and then ISD would then send a letter to the complainant as well as the AG's office. Okay. Motion to, to approve the draft response. Second. 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 Okay. Thank you, Mr. Stembridge. Yeah. Mr. Valencia. Yes. Mr. Langham. Yes. Mr. Collins. Yes. Ms. Olivier. Yes. Ms. Panato. Yes. Chair votes yes. The motion carries. All right. And I think that concludes our hearing for June 25th. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.